Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Project Jupyter IPython Developers Weekly Call. Today's Tuesday, May 8th, and we will, we're following an agenda on Dropbox Paper, and we will go ahead and get started with uh, updates on IPython. Uh, so the update that's in the agenda is that Matthias has said he's going to do releases of IPython 6.4, and 5.7. Um, so if anybody's missed that memo, uh, Python 6 is requires Python 3. So we're maintaining IPython 5.x releases for longer than we usually do. Um, I don't think there's any massive changes in these. I think it's just a, some time has passed and some things have been merged since we last did a release. And we want to make sure that users are actually benefiting from the work that we do. Um, so yeah, Matthias will be hopefully doing that in the next couple of days. Uh, and then similarly for Notebook um, version 5.5, the release candidate has been out for about a week and there haven't been a lot of problems reported with it. Hopefully that's because there aren't many problems and not just because nobody's tested it, but you never know. Um, Brian mentioned a file descriptor leak, which as far as I know, nobody has attempted to reproduce yet. Um, I'll hopefully try to have a go at that before, before releasing it, but I don't, yeah. I haven't done much with file descriptor leaks before and it may be platform specific and um, there is a very much a lack of detail on this on this problem. Yeah. I've had a bit of a look at it and haven't been able to reproduce it but it's generally easier to reproduce um, on Macs because they have a lower default file descriptor limit mm -hmm. in the mid hundreds instead of the 4K or something that's default on Linux. Yeah. But I, I suspect it's a specific installation weirdness. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'll have a, I'll have a brief go at it, but yeah. if nothing's obvious, then I will chalk it up to mystery and okay. go ahead with the release. All right, anything else on Notebook or Python before we move on? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so looks like next on the agenda, I, I'm gonna skip over um, Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Widgets. Um, we can catch those in the miscellaneous section if anyone has any updates or things that they wanna talk about related to those um, and move on to services. It looks like, Peter, you have some notes there. Yeah, just, two small heads up. One is uh, still working on documentation for the Docker stacks. Um, there's a PR open about the con contributions section of the doc. Um, primarily, it's focusing on, you know, trying to scope out what are contributions that we welcome pretty much without any review, you know, version updates to packages, and then trying to call out, you know, or set some guidelines for what might be better maintained outside the Docker stacks repo. Um, you know, versus inside and, you know, the types of uh, PRs that, you know, we'd love to see either way, uh, just to start a discussion. So if anyone has some feedback on that, it's kind of a, trying to make sure it's phrased right, because we want to make sure people do contribute to it, but we do want to try to set some, you know, guidance on whether features should just keep piling into that repo or if we should have it external to that repo. Um, and then the second thing I wrote there was just, I posted on the mailing list, I think it was a little over a week ago, that I was going to go clean up some old Docker images, and I've done that. So I'm just calling that out again in case uh, anyone's wondering where some two-year-old images have gone. Didn't touch any of the source on GitHub, so clearly we could rebuild them if needed. Uh, the vast majority of them have just moved over to the Jupyter Hub namespace anyway, so that's all I had. Um, I don't know, if, Min, if you had anything else. Yep. That's good. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Peter. And so now we'll move on to updates on Jupyter Hub. 
we've started uh, um, there's been lots of polishing and testing and things going on and we've started the release process so the first beta of 0 0.9 is out and shifting gears to um, testing deployments and and uh, testing in the wild and updating <coughs> making sure documentation and and things are all set for for release over the next few weeks and we'll put there will probably be a release of the Jupyter Hub Helm chart. It's looking like probably not long after the Jupyter Hub release. This seems like where we're headed. OK. Anything to add, Carol? No. OK. All right. So we're um, getting closer to the end of the agenda. Um, before we move on to events and conferences, um, this would be a chance to speak up on anything that hasn't been covered so far. Uh, it looks like, Thomas, you have some notes about NB Convert. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mainly about the uh, Jupyter client replacement work that I've been doing, um, just to keep people updated that that's progressed to the point where I've got a, a branch of NB Convert that runs with those APIs instead of Jupyter client. Picked MB Convert as a starting point because it's relatively simple. You know, it just it starts up a kernel, it executes a bunch of cells, and then it shuts the kernel down again. Um, so, a self-contained thing to to try and port to those APIs. Um, and I discovered quite a few problems with the APIs in doing that and fixed them. Um, and those two packages, Jupyter Kernel Management and Jupyter Protocol, are now on PyPI as version 0.1. So they're, they're getting there slowly. Okay. Um, thank you, Thomas. And now um, just a few reminders on uh, JupyterCon. Or actually, was there anything else in the miscellaneous section before I move on? Uh, just one small thing from KubeCon last week. Um, KubeFlow um, actually had a very positive reception and um, the um, tenor within the whole conference was very positive towards Jupyter and IPython. And, um, which was nice to see. So um, it was a good conference. Nice. Um, Carol, Jessica mentioned um, uh, people reaching out to her um, for, um, to help out as well. Um, do you think, um, I, I mean, I know you, you put up an issue with that. Um, I, I'm actually interested in getting involved as well. So um, I guess I can, well, I'll email you about that and we'll, we'll move from there. Carol, you're muted. Sorry. No. Um, <laughs> after the red eye, unmute and mute. <laughs> uh, Jessica, all you need to do is just um, jump into the issues on the Kubeflow repo, and you can help any way you want. Perfect. OK, great. So uh, just a few reminders on um, JupyterCon, we have two uh, deadlines coming up. One, the um, pricing for registration will go up after May 18th. Um, and also we have the student scholarships applications, which are open through the middle of June. Um, as far as our list of conferences and workshops, I won't go through all of them, but please continue to add things to this list as you see things come across your radar that might be interesting to um, the other core contributors or also um, the community in general, including those open calls for proposals. Um, the very next thing coming up is Jupiter, uh, Jupiter pop-up in DC. Um, Pete, it looks like Peter is speaking. Um, and outside of that, looks like probably all of the um, release notes are up to date. If you have anything that you're planning, you're planning. releasing this week or next week or that you release next week, please um, duplicate that into the very bottom of the agenda. Just uh, on conferences, I just wanted yes. to highlight 
that the EuroPython uh, CFP has opened. Uh, it's for a very short window, I think, because they it took them it took them longer than usual to to get ready for the CFP. So mm -hmm. there's only a two week window. Um, I'm hoping to to submit something and hoping to to be at the conference that's in Edinburgh at the end of July. Okay. Very good. Um, anything else from anyone before we go ahead and close out? No. Okay. All right. Well, great to see everyone and I hope you have a good rest of the week.